Welcome back everyone to the custom story of my love. This is part six. This is where we left off. Part five. Before Bandicam decided to not record every single part. So I had to play through the whole thing again. Up to the point where it stopped. No. Hello, Mrs. Listener. Has Mary been in here? No, sir. Not for the last few hours. I've been in here trying to get this wine stain out of the chair. Somebody had an accident? Yes, your father's friends tend to get a little tipsy in this room. Uh, yes, I, I know. Thank you, Mrs. Listener. Oh, it's locked. Alright. Samuel, may I speak with you a moment? I have something to tell you. Of course, sir. What is it, Father? I take it you remember the Harrisons. You've met them a few times at one of my parties, uh, with their daughter, Martha. Yes, I do. A very charming family. Yes, indeed. Well, they have just recently sold their estate in London. We're looking for property here across the pond, Neverton City. Oh, that's good to hear. I should like to be seeing them again, very much. Indeed, for you shall be seeing them a lot more than you even realize. Uh, sir? It's, well, the firm hasn't been doing so well. Ever since Rosenberg held the conception, he had a real knack for this business. That man. The point is, we are losing money on the estate, and unless we can stop our clients from taking their business elsewhere, we'll eventually need to sell the estate. I know I can help! I can pick up a Rosenberg left! I know I can do this job if you give me the chance! I know you can do the job, sir. But you'd have some pretty big shoes to fill. No. There's an even simpler solution to this problem. What is it? When the Harrisons arrive in the States, they'll be spending a week or two here. To get acquainted with the area and locate a decent property. You and Matt always got along pretty well, and... What are you saying, sir? I'm the Mary Martha? <sighs> yes, my boy. They have a lot of money and are very generous with it. With you married to her, we'll have ourselves a little safety net. God knows it takes a lot of money to keep this place in any decent shape. But I... I don't... doesn't... Doesn't seem what, my boy. She had always taken a fancy to you, and you cannot deny she's pleading to the eye, knowing all the reasons. I do not deny that, but... I have important matters to take care of, Samuel. We'll discuss this another time. When she gets here, you will get to know her, and then ask for her father's permission in marriage. Now be on your way. Yes, sir. Well, with that... <sighs> uh-huh. Bull crap. Ah, this is it. Alright, let's get these. Mary! Samuel! I, I just wanted to say, I care about you a lot. We've always been there for each other and, well, 
I don't think we belong together like this. Mary, I, these things I feel for you. I had no idea until now that this is what I wanted. I wanted you here with me. You're the only one I've ever truly cared about. And I don't want you to go. But there's just too much in between us. Like hell there is! Listen to me, please. I understand if things feel like they're moving fast, but... Know that I will always be here for you. That I love you so very much. It's okay if you don't feel the same, but... Oh, Sam, of course I do. I didn't have the heart to tell her about my conversation with Father. I couldn't bear it. And I doubt she could either. As we held each other in our arms. There'd have to be some way to convince my father that marrying Martha was unnecessary. That he'd have to be confident I could pick up the slack where Rosenberg had failed. I just needed time. Mary would be mine. <coughs> are, are you alright? <coughs> yeah, yes. It's just a cough. I'll be fine. Two weeks later, Mary had caught tuberculosis. She tried to hide it, but her parents found her blood spattered pillow from her nighttime coughing fits. I hired the best doctor I could to take a look at her, despite her parents' objections that they needed no charity. It wasn't for them that I did, but for my own reassurance. He confirmed the fearful prognosis, confined her to bed, and gave her some special tonic to help treat it. She was given a 50% chance of survival due to her overall health and stubbornness in which she accepted her fate. Samuel, you're stepping on my toes! Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's okay, just pay attention. Mary had me worried terribly, but my responsibilities to Martha, to my estate really, took up a large portion of my free time. Martha was a sweet girl, though not unlike the other girls who glanced my way. It was obvious she was attracted to me, but I couldn't make myself let go of Mary. Martha saw this in me every time I brought up Mary in our conversations of the fondness I expressed for my friend, my true beloved. I'm glad to see you two enjoying yourselves. Oh yes, he's such a good dancer. That's good to hear. If I may break you up for a moment, I wish to speak with my son. Oh, okay. I'll be sitting at the table. I have just spoken to George and asked for your permission to marry Martha. Father! I'm a grown man who... Who has spent too long ignoring the situation we were in. You have a responsibility to this estate and to the family. Business has not improved much since Rosenberg's death. Which is why I keep asking you to give me a chance at your work. I'm no longer a ten-year-old who needs constant supervision. No! You will ask Martha for her hand in marriage, tonight, before they go to bed. And for Christ's sake, you will put aside your silly infatuation with that piece of girl rotting in her bed. She's in a condition to help maintain the household, and will probably be dead in a few months anyway. You bastard! Don't talk to me like that! You will ask her, tonight. I will be watching you very closely, Sam. she's really getting better. There's no need to fret over her. I'm sorry. Surely you can understand my concern for her. I've known her for more than half of my life. She's a dear friend. I know she is. But you've barely spent any time with me. If we are to be married, I want to know more of my future husband. I want to know he cares for me just as much as I care for him. I do care for you. You can still be friends with her when you're married. I know how much she means to you. I don't want to get between your friendship, but I need reassurance you aren't marrying me for convenience. Martha, dear, I'm not marrying you for convenience. You're a sweet girl who no doubt is suitable for intelligent conversation and child rearing. You'll make a fine wife for me. I will do everything in my power to be a dutiful husband you require. Dutiful, yes. But can you be loving? 
I just heard the news from my mother. You 